Hey, how's it going? How you doing? I'm good. My name is Bobby Watts. And I'm Kyle Stacy. And welcome to Smack Talk. Ooh. Welcome back. I'm excited. This is cool. Yeah, so this is episode 31. It's been five years in the making. Five years. But here we are. We made it. <laughs> five years ago, were you in middle school? Uh, barely. Yeah, he's in middle school or something. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. So, uh, Bert isn't with us uh, for this episode. If you saw our little teaser video we put out, um, he's super busy running his whole BK Designs and his whole empire. So Kyle agreed to graciously help me out and be our co-host for this season. And uh, we think, I'm, I'm already learning a lot from this guy. So I think you guys are gonna be, I, I'm excited for you. We got some cool stuff to cover. Yeah, really there, there's, yeah. Some, there's some good stuff in this episode. Yeah. So this episode is all about the Mikado V Control. And the V-Bar Neo. Yep. And it's all thanks to this guy that I'm even flying this radio. You're welcome. Um, I flew through Tabo for many, many, many years and awesome stuff. Just can't say enough good things about it. But this V-Control is on another level. It's just new. It's revolutionary. It really is. Yeah. It's totally different. Totally unique. Yeah, it's awesome. It's cool. The coolest part is that it just talks so well to the flybar this unit. And it's like, man, we've needed this for so long. It's like, obviously, duh. Remember the days of like pulling out your computer and like, oh, I need more foot brakes. You don't need that anymore. It's yeah. on the radio. It's yeah. on the radio. Everything's in the radio. So I yeah. think you guys are going to be really, really happy with this. So in this episode, we're, we, we went on YouTube and we looked and saw what kind of videos are out there on the V-Control. And Mikado's made some really cool videos, some very, very good videos. So first of all, check those videos out if you haven't seen them. Um, a lot of their team pilots have put out some good videos. So like we always try to do in Smack Talk, we're just trying to give you that kind of one-stop shop uh, video for everything from setup to expert tune, and I think that hopefully we'll achieve that in this video. Yeah, but if we don't cover a setting, it's either because we just don't use it or we don't really need to adjust it. Stock value is fine, but well, we covered pretty much everything. Absolutely, yeah, everything. I think so. Yeah. So, as, as Kyle mentioned, there's a million settings in the radio, it's super powerful. Mm -hmm. So, just because we don't talk about it doesn't mean you shouldn't use it or whatever. We just personally don't use it. So, that's the biggest caveat to this episode. Mm -hmm. And there's many ways to skin a cat. So you, so you might want to do it this way. We might want to do it that way. So um, yeah, we think this episode's going to be kind of that one-stop shop for you guys. You'll be able to see um, everything from start to finish. So uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's, uh, let's kick it in to the uh, first step here, which is just, uh, let's look at it. Let's look at the radio. Let's see what's different about this radio. And uh, we'll get into it. So welcome back to Smack Talk. Oh yeah, new intro. Oh. New song. Here it comes. Yeah, let's do all that. Played let's by him. Let's yeah, he's gonna him. play with me one day. Yeah, we're gonna duel. Yeah, he, he plays guitar too. But uh, yeah, our new intro here. Let's roll the intro and we'll get into it. Here it comes, Smack Talk episode 31. Let's go. Okay, let's have a look at the V control and see what it can do. So as you see here, thanks to Mr. Stacy, we have a plethora of V control radios. So the V control radio, currently they just have pretty much one model out right now. This is uh, October 2017 and they have one model out. So this is just your standard V bar control radio. Um, they have them available in both uh, plastic cases and in aluminum cases. And I think in total there's maybe like six or eight different plastic uh, case colors. Here you can see we have black, clear, uh, I think this was a prototype that never quite made it. Um, and then they have the aluminum version here which is anodized and blue. Um, this version is awesome, it looks really cool. 
Uh, the plastic versions are obviously much lighter. The aluminum versions are a bit heavier. It's kind of a personal preference with um, however you want to proceed. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. So here you can see we have our uh, training cam, for the lack of a better word. We can film the transmitter as we're going through menus, as we're flying. So you might see this guy and some other sort of variations of it in this episode. Um, it's been really helpful because we can just show you exactly what's going on in the screen quite easily. Um, so let's take a look at it. Let's talk about the V-Control and really what makes it so different from a standard transmitter. So the main thing is that uh, the best way to describe the V-Control is it's just an interface. It's not a radio. Um, traditional radios, in a sense, have always had the program stored on the radio itself. So it always has all the trim settings. It always has the, uh, the way the sticks move, uh, your, your expo, your pitch. All these sorts of things are stored in the radio traditionally. Then we transmit those settings to the receiver, and the receiver is just kind of dumb, and it just follows whatever the transmitter says to do. Well, in the V-Control, they did it a little differently. So with a standard V-Bar, even years ago before the V-Control, they would just store all the programs internally, and then you would send it a signal, and then it would run its own algorithms inside and then output that to your servos and fly your helicopter. Well, now they've kind of taken that and kind of brought it all together in the radio form so that the whole entire program is stored right here. So this is the V-Bar Neo right here. This is the flight controller, the flybar list unit, and this one's got antennas. So this one flies the helicopter itself, receives the signal, and then also has telemetry built in between the radio and the receiver and sends the signals back and forth. So the beautiful thing is that once again, the radio is just an interface. It's just a way to access your programming into this guy right here. So there's nothing stored on the radio at all, nothing at all. So you can literally bind a brand new radio to your V-Bar Neo and be flying in less than 20 seconds. It's incredible, it's really cool. Um, so I really like it. There's a lot of flexibility and a lot of things you can do with it because of this fact. So it's very, very cool. So we're gonna take a look now at some of the basic menus of uh, how the V-Control works and what sets it apart from other radios. So, in order to power on here, they don't even have, there's no switch, there's no nothing. It's kind of strange to power this thing on. So how you power on is you press in and you t turn it to the right. So you can see here, we've got it lit up. So let's go onto this other radio and have a look. So I'm gonna turn it back off. Cool, so let's go in and turn this guy on. So we're gonna turn this guy on here. And as you can see, we have, um, here's our basic settings here. We have our uh, transmitter battery, shows my name, uh, the version that we're running here, the date, um, lots of useful information right on the home page. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at, when it talks to the V-Bar Neo, let's, let's have a look at what it can do here. So I've already bound this up, and speak of binding, we're gonna get into that in the next section. But let's just have a look at just kind of what we can see right off the bat. So I'm just plugging this in and you'll hear we're connected now. So as soon as you plug this guy in, it starts talking to each other. It starts initializing once I actually stop throwing it around in the air here. Um, so it's going to initialize and now we are all set. We are hooked up here. So let's have a look at some of the menus and see what this guy can do. So in here, in, a, in the V-Bar control radio, bound to a V-Bar Neo, here are available menus. We have the transmitter setup, archive, main rotor, tail rotor, governor, model status, model setup, and application setup. That's pretty much our main menus here. Um, now we're not gonna get in once, like we said earlier in the intro, we're not gonna get into every single menu here, but I just wanna give you an overall view of what we use and, and just kinda how this radio works here. So in transmitter setup, we have what's called application enable. This is really great. Applications is how Mikado decided to give the radio more power. So in essence, they didn't just come out with a radio and all of its applications right off the bat. They just came out with the core applications that you needed. And the beauty of being able to load and unload new applications is the fact that they can continually update the radio just like you would with your smartphone. You can just go to the app store and buy a new app. Well, it's the same thing for this radio. So in here we have applications that we're running like auto switch off, where if there's no activity on the radio, it just turns off after a, after a programmed amount of time. Um, 
we can have it talk to us, talking telemetry. We have uh, battery IDs so that this way the radio knows which kind of battery we're flying. Uh, RC voltage monitor, uh, timers. We have main and tail overdrive, which we're going to cover later. Um, we have all sorts of things in here. We can control planes, so V plane. We have uh, multi rotor support in here. We have Scorpion ESC support, Nitro Governor. So there's many different applications in here which make this just a super powerful radio once we load it up. Um, similar to applications, we also have extensions here. So if we go into um, model setup, we have extensions where we can do things like have our talking telemetry, we can display our RPMs, we can have a flight timer. So between the applications and the extensions, the radio is super powerful. Um, getting into our basic menu here, for anyone familiar with a V-Bar, perhaps like I did, I came from using uh, another radio, I was using Futaba with a V-Bar. This one in here, we can set uh, the same settings that you would have set in the computer with your V-Bar. We just set everything here on the radio. So we can adjust things like our flip rate, we can set our style, we can set our gains, our tail rotor speeds, we can set everything here right from the radio. There's literally no need to use a computer for setting up a basic model, with a few exceptions. You might have to use a computer every once in a while. Um, we also have, what's really, really nice, is we have some telemetry. Um, so once again, we can see the data, uh, and the data rate and the quality of the data being sent between the transmitter and the receiver, which is awesome. So if you're having like a glitch or any sort of an issue that you think might be antenna related or something, you can just go in right here and have a look at it. And it's really nice to be able to see that. Um, we can also see a log. We can see a, a, a log of exactly what's going on as it's flying. So if you were to have a crash and not know what's going on, you can literally power off the log right on your radio and have a, uh, instant access as to what's going on with your uh, aircraft. Uh, vibrations, you can see here we can we can shake the V-bar and we can get some vibrations to come through it. And this will help you diagnose if you have a bent main shaft, bent tail shaft, things like that. So the radio is just super, super powerful here. There's so many things that we're going to get into in this episode. But the basic overview is the fact that this radio talks extremely well to the Neo and any other uh, V-Bar that you're using. I guess I didn't mention, um, you can get a uh, external receiver that plugs into any V-Bar that you have and then your V-Control will just simply talk to the V-Bar Neo. Um, I guess lastly, this, uh, for example, this Neo can be put in a simple receiver mode, which we'll show you how to do, and you can just use this as a simple plain old receiver, not just a flight controller for a helicopter. So you could use this with a plane or a boat or a robot, whatever, whatever you wanted it to, to do. So as you can see, we're going to disconnect here. So if we power off, we see connection broken. So once again, they're talking to each other. We know that uh, we've got a good link between everything. Now we can power off and shut down the transmitter. So that's just a real basic look at the V-Control. So now I'm going to hand it over to Kyle, and he's going to go through how we're going to bind this thing, how we're going to set this up, and a lot of the functions that we use right off the bat. All right, now we're going to cover what happens when you first get your V-Bar control to go from box to bound. So imagine this is your brand new radio. We just pulled it out of the box. What do we do first? So first things first, we'll turn it on. And here we have not connected. The name is already set, but we can cover that. So we'll first go into transmitter setup, open it up, and we get to bind. So we'll bind this V-Bar here to the radio. So we'll come in and power the V-Bar. After 10 to 20 seconds, the V-Bar will enter bind mode, which means it's going to flash from red to green. That's when it's in bind mode. So coming up here, it's going to start flashing. Now it's in bind mode. You see in the radio, it pops right up, new 600. We'll bind to it. Now we're connected. Recognizes the V-Bar, we're good to go. So we'll continue on through the menu. To, uh, we already covered application enable, so we don't need to go through that. USB mode is if you want to connect to a simulator or if you need to do updates, but we're doing neither right now. Display, you can change the contrast of the display, so if you crank it up, you can see it gets very bright, or a little dark. You don't typically need to adjust that too much, but if you want to, you can. 
Next is minimum brightness. So this is uh, if you're in a dark environment, like if you night fly or in a dark room, you can change how bright the display will get. So the default's at 20. I leave it there. No real need to change it. Volumes. So this is all the noise that the Vapor control will make. So the wheel sounds. You can get it louder if you want it, or quieter. Uh, system messages if it's talking to you. Um, telemetry, timer, you can all change that if you want to. Up and down. We'll move on to buddy box setup. We're going to cover that later in a different segment. Assign and calibrate. So, stick mode. So, typically in the US we fly mode 2, which is what it comes preset. But, if you're in Europe, Australia, they fly mode 1, 3, 4, all sorts of different stuff. So. And there you can change it if you want to. You can see when you move the sticks, it's in mode 2 right now. Uh, aileron, this is where you would calibrate each stick individually. So you can see it's at 0 in the center and the percentage. So it's centered, so I move the stick over, it's at 100. Move the other way, it's 100. I usually recalibrate my sticks once every couple of months just from travel. If it gets bumped, something, you can kind of knock them out of calibration. Uh, so just keep an, keep an eye on it. Go down the elevator, do the same thing, let it get to zero in the center, 100%, 100%. So everything's the same for rudder and pitch, then we'll go to collective center find. So they usually set this very well in the factory, but if you want to adjust it yourself, you can. You just put the stick somewhere in the middle, and then you click set zero. This one's already preset, so I'm not worried about it, but if you want to change it, you can. Mandatory switches. So this is the switches you will need no matter what. So, bank switching, uh, for those of you who don't use V-Bar Control, that is your idle up. This is how you go from bank 1 to bank 2 to bank 3. Uh, we happen to have it on this switch, but if you want, you can move it to, say, this switch. You can see in the radio it's changing. Put it back on that switch. Motor switch, this controls motor on and off, also known as throttle hold for most people. So, you can see motor off means throttle hold. Idle is for your throttle hold bailout and then run is actually flying, motor spinning, everything like that. And then buddy switch, this is for buddy boxing. If you don't use buddy boxing, you can just set it to an arbitrary switch, but ours is back here. You can see it goes master to buddy. Moving on from there, we have local switches. So, something cool is these knobs up here. Uh, you can use these to adjust parameters on the fly while in flight. So, how this works is you would open up a parameter and move the knob. Now the parameter is only set to that knob per flight. If you turn off the model, it's no longer set to that knob. So parameter lock here, you can set it to a switch. So you can have it set so you flip this switch down and then the knob is active, and then you flip it back up. Basically that just prevents you from cranking that value up or down while in flight accidentally. Just a safety feature. Moving on to security. If you want to have double throttle hold just for redundancy for safety, you can have it set so you have to hit one switch and then another to get the motor spinning. Personal preference, I have it set so it's just one switch for throttle hold, but if you want to have double redundancy, you certainly can. Moving on, optional switches. So what you would want to use this for is if you're using like a switch glow on a nitro or to turn on your Delcon if you're flying at night. So this is just setting the location. So option, eight, option one is here. Option two is here, and then option three is set back here. Battery voltage zero volt. That one's set Eight, for zero milliampere hours. Telemetry, clearly. So you just set the location here, and then when you're doing the setup, you would select option one, option two, just so you don't have to go ah uh, switch number whatever. Just kind of simplifies the whole setup. So we'll go on from there, and then transmitter name. If you want to put your name in here or a goofy name, when I first got my radios, I had a couple thanks to Mercado so I was naming them after different rappers because I'm a little goofy like that but uh, that's basically the the main setup you get when you first get your radio um, moving on from there say you have just a basic setup file saved in the v-bar and you want to load it across your second model so you have two 600s you want to put it on the next one what you can do is you go down to model setup setup tools save load setup. Now you get three options here. New is to save the file, replace is to replace a saved file on the radio, and then load is to put the file onto the V-bar. So we'll put new to save it, 
You can change the name. I'll just leave it as new 600. Click save. Done. Now, say this V-bar is brand new. There's nothing saved or no setup file on it. You go down to save load setup. Load. And then we have a bunch of setups in here. And new 600 right there. We'll start loading the setup. Everything will come over. So that's about it from box to bound. Let's move on to the next segment. First things first, you gotta download the V-Bar Control Manager. This is used to do updates on the radio as well as your V-Bar Neo. So on the vstabi.info website, I go right here to the V-Bar Control Manager. And you can install it for Mac and Windows. So I already have it installed. So now we will open it, turn on the radio. It automatically puts itself in USB mode. So we will open up V-Bar Control Manager. Gonna do a file integrity check, make sure everything's good, no corrupt files, nothing like that. Okay, so if there were any updates required for your radio, it would start installing them. But this radio is fully up to date, so it doesn't need to install anything. So first thing we'll do is we'll click on Applications. It's going to open up the vstavi.info website so you can register and install applications on the radio. Alright, so everything's loaded. And since I've already registered this radio, I don't have to anymore. But right here would be a nice big button that says Register Now. You click that, it would associate it to your account, and then send you an email confirming that. So up here you can change the language of the radio if you want to. Mine's set to English because I speak English. You can also set it to German if you want to. So now we have the applications. This is the basic folder here. So the first one is auto switch off. Basically what this is, is if you're not connected to a V-bar and you're not changing anything in the radio, you can have the radio turn off after a certain amount of time. Mine set to a minute and a half. So after a minute and a half of not touching the radio, it'll turn itself off. Uh, going down, there's multi-copter, airplane, sim, just a bunch of different stuff you can load. Moving down, we have extensions. So this is more of along the lines of telemetry for the radio. So you can do the battery logbook and save your batteries to your radio. You can do expert aux channels for the older blue line and server line V-bars. Uh, you can increase the flip rate past 100% agility. Just screenshot if you want to send your buddy a screenshot of your setup. Just a bunch of different stuff you can do with that. All right, so this is the setup section. So chances are when you bought your V-Bar Neo or previous V-Bar, it came with Express setup on it, which that means is you don't get all the fine tuning parameters that Pro comes with. Now some of you that might be enough, but for other of us, you probably want more tuning parameters installed. So what you would do is you come down to setup, V-Bar Neo Pro parameters, and this is where you can purchase it. I believe it costs around $40. Uh, you can do it for your old V-Bars as well as the new Neos. So you'd load that here, you can put the nitro setup. If you want to buy rescue, you can do that here. Macro cells, free swash, this is just all advanced tuning stuff. So you would just go over here and click load app, and the V-Bar Control Manager will load it for you. So moving on from there, we have the telemetry. So this is all stuff for like battery and speed and RPM and voltage. So you have the Contronic app loaded and it'll tell you milliamps used, or the Scorpion app will do the same thing. The temperature sensor, the, the current sensor, the RPM sensor, this is all stuff that Mikado provides, and this is the app to go along with it. So you can install the GPS, all that stuff. Moving on is the timer. So the radio does not natively come with a timer, you gotta install the app. Basically it's just, you install it, you set your flight time, as soon as the motor starts spinning, the timer starts. Pretty simple. Moving on, we have the voice. So. If you want to have the radio talk to you, talk to the, the timer, the telemetry, everything you install here, as well as talking to switches. So if you hit the switch, it'll tell you motors running, whatever switch you hit, kind of depends on how you have it set up. And finally, it's talking telemetry. So you can have this set up where I hit a switch and it'll tell me how fast I'm flying if I'm using the GPS sensor. So say you want to load an app. You just find one that you want, you click load app, it'll say update. Back in the V-Bar Control Manager, it's already running the update. So now it's going to start downloading the application onto the radio. The radio will likely reboot, then the app's on the radio. So now that all of our applications are installed, we can go through and see a list of them. If we go into Transmitter Setup, Application Enable. This is a list of all the applications loaded on the radio. And say for some reason you don't want to use expert aux channels, you can just turn it off from here. Uh, also, if you install an app that needs setup, 
If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a menu called Application Setup. You can tweak and tune them as much as you need. In addition to using the VBAR Control Manager program to update and add and remove extensions and applications, we can also use it to connect our VBAR Control radio to the computer. Once we connect it to the computer, we can actually uh, get various setup files off of the radio itself. So if we go into here, we'll see that once I've plugged in my radio into the US, uh, into the computer by USB, if I click on V control here, you see that it's added as a device. So it's added under one of my devices here in my Mac. On PC, it'd be the same. And in here, there's all sorts of different folders. Here's where your screenshots are stored if you have that application. But what we want right here is VBAR. So if we click on VBAR, these are the exact models that I have saved from my radio onto its internal memory. And it's created a file right here. So for example, I just went in and saved my latest Goblin 700 setup here. And what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna post this setup and maybe one or two of Kyle's setups. And you'll be able to see that on our website, smacktalkrc.com. And you can actually just take your file that we loaded. So for example, I put it on Google Drive. So if I take this file, once you download our file, you can simply take it and drag it and drag it right into that VBAR folder. And once it adds itself to the folder, then you can pull that up on your radio and, it, and load that program as Kyle walked you through earlier in this episode. Now, biggest warning that we can say, please, please, please make sure you check your directions and you make sure that your tail servo is the correct setup and make sure that our settings are gonna work for you because just because they're working in our model with our particular setups, all the little differences in a setup may make your helicopter not fly as well or even crash and we don't want that to happen. So please take extraordinary care whenever you load any sort of a program uh, onto your helicopter. Make sure you go through the pre-flight checklist like we'll describe later. So this is how you connect your VBAR control radio to the computer and save and load various programs. Before we begin the setup, let's have a look at the VBAR Neo and what the various ports are and what gets plugged into them. So along this whole left side, first and foremost, is power bank, okay? So we can plug in power and get power from any one of these channels here. So beginning at the top, we have the ESC port. So the ESC port, as you see right here, um, the ESC port is where you plug in your ESC control wire or if you're running Nitro, this is where you plug in your Nitro servo for the throttle. So next we have tail. This is where you plug in the tail servo. And then next moving down is channel one through four. These are for your servos for your swash plate. So channel one is gonna be your elevator servo. Then working around in a clockwise direction from the top is channel two, three, and four. Uh, channel four would be if you have a four servo uh, CCPM which if you have that, that's very cool. I've never met you before, but uh, come give us a shot. So then we have auxiliary one, auxiliary two, auxiliary three. So aux one is right here, uh, plugged in sideways. And this is where you're gonna plug in aux devices like a switch glow or a light, uh, light controller for night flying or something like that. Lastly, we have the RPM port right here. So that's facing this way. And the RPM ports where you're going to plug in your RPM wire from your ESC or from like a phase sensor or something like that. So coming on the side here, we have telemetry ports. Uh, these are, it's kind of like USB where you can plug it into either one. It doesn't matter which one you plug into. And this is for telemetry sensors from either Mikado or Scorpion or any uh, external device that has telemetry features built into it. This is where you plug them in right here. Next on the back, obviously, we have the two antenna wires, which can be replaced, actually. You can open up the unit and pop them off from the inside. They're not soldered, they just pop right off. Um, but we have the sensor port and we have the USB wire. So obviously the USB port's where you plug in a mini USB port. 
uh, USB cord and then the sensor port right here. Do not plug voltage into this or else it will result in a magic puff of smoke and it's very bad. So don't plug voltage into here. But what you can plug in here is a blue line, silver line, or Neo external sensor. So that gives you some sort of redundancy. So that's the V-Bar Neo. Now let's get into setup. So here I've got my mini Comet simply for the fact that I can hold it here in my hands and walk you through the setup. Uh, this setup is really no difference between no different between a really tiny machine like a mini Comet or a really big machine like a Logo 800 or something. Um, the setup's really going to be almost identical for how we're going to walk through these steps. So let's have a look here. Once again, we've got the tranny cam here showing stick movements. So um, let's just get right into it here. So this is assuming that we've already bound the V-Bar Neo. So let's get into it. So first I'm going to turn on my radio. And as you can see here, we're not connected to anything. And then I'm going to plug in my battery. I've also removed main and tail blades just for safety. As you can see, we're connected here. It's initialized. Once it initialized, the uh, green, the V turns green here once we're all set. And now I've got um, a full view of everything. So as you can see here, I've got uh, a good connection and I can see my BEC voltage here coming from the uh, ESC. Okay, so for this part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the setup that I have and completely wipe it. I've already saved it so I can revert back to it later. But let's just go through a new heli setup, assuming that this is just a brand new heli. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to go into model setup. And then I'm going to go to setup tools. And then go to new heli wizard. So when you bind the V-Bar Neo for the first time, this new heli wizard is going to pop up anyway. But for this sake, we're just going to completely reset this guy. So I'll go back in new heli wizard. And for this, I will go to uh, new 450. And as you can see, they've, Mikado has a lot of helicopters preloaded into it already. But um, since this is not a logo machine, we're going to go into other 450, which is about the closest I can get to this. Um, it does tell me to unplug my motor cables and take off the blades. So I've taken off the blades. That's safe enough for me. So load values and start a new setup. So now it's wiping everything in the radio, and we're going to start from scratch here. Uh, it's still going to keep your extensions that you've loaded in and your applications. So that part of your radio is still going to stay in there. But for, it's going to wipe all the parameters here in the V-Bar Neo. So that's what it's doing as it's loading the setup here. Okay, so now it's loaded up a brand new setup file for us. So let's just simply answer the questions. It asks how the V-Bar Neo is situated in my machine. So for me, I've got face up, wires to the rear. So I'm going to select that. Next. Select swash plate. HR3 is standard for most RC helicopters out there. Um, now in here, actually I'll give a little caveat here. They give you two different options for uh, servo CCPM, whether it's 120 degrees reverse or 120 degrees. To be honest, um, I've set it up either way, but what you'll find is that the compensation is backwards in one or the other. So I leave this, this model in particular and all the Goblin models is uh, 120 degrees reversed. I believe my Synergy was the same way. But if you find that your compensation director, direction is backwards, you go in here and change the CCPM direction. Uh, clockwise to the right, yes, it's a normal helicopter. Um, it's asking for control direction. Um, so we are leading edge controlling on most helicopters out there. Um, now it comes to where we're going to set up the servos so that, so that they're moving correctly. So as you can see here, as I'm moving my swash up and down, my uh, servos are not going in the right direction. My elevator is moving in the right direction, but my uh, pitch and aileron servos are not moving in the right direction. So this means I would reverse channels two and three. Two and three. So now when I go up, it goes up, down it goes down. Great. Swash plate direction is set. Okay. Next, it asks us to trim the swash plate. So there's two different ways to trim the servos and the swash plate in the radio. One is using this menu here where you can 
trim the aileron as a whole or the elevator as a whole. So in this case, I could trim the whole swash plate to the left or trim the whole swash plate to the right. I prefer using this once I've got the initial setup kind of done. But what I actually prefer to do is go into an expert menu and set each servo's individual trim perfectly um, the first time. So once again, I'll get into this menu a little bit later, but for right now, I actually just don't press anything. I, I, don't, I don't use any of this trim in this menu. Next, it's going to go into pitch setup. It's very simple. We're going to move our, we're going to put our blades on. We're going to put a pitch gauge on. I'm not going to do it here because hopefully you guys know what a pitch gauge is. We're going to put our pitch gauge on and we're going to go to negative collective, set the value, positive collective, set the value. Um, I always prefer to try to have my pitch as close as possible, to the, the numbers as close as possible. So if we're at negative 100 and 100, then hopefully that's 10 and 10 or what, whatever you prefer. So Kyle and I have run anywhere from 11 to 14 degrees pitch, depending on what we're flying. Uh, for you, that's honestly just a personal preference. So in here, you can set your pitch. I'll get out of this. So next is a cyclic value. So Mikado has used this cyclic value for a long time to, I, I believe I've heard many different opinions on this. So that I feel like people may argue with us on this one. But I've heard on one hand it's to help set a gain. Uh, the second one is to help give an idea. We believe it could be eye gain perhaps. Um, another one is just to set up kind of the feel of how much stick you're going to give and how much uh, throw it's going to throw out on the swash plate. So Kyle and I prefer to go in here, we hit enter, they, what it does is it offsets the swash plate, here it gives an aileron roll, and it says set to 8 degrees. And for some helicopters in the past, some V-bars, I've actually set this to 10 degrees and it felt good, but recently with the Neos we set it to 8 and the swash plate just feels nice and linear. So what you're going to do here is you're going to adjust your cyclic value here so that you're truly at 8 degrees. So throw a pitch gauge on, set that to 8 degrees. Next, we're going to set the tail. Tail rotor is quite simple. Um, first, I'll go in and select the tail servo. So this is a BK servo, and I believe it's 333760. Yep, that's correct. Then I can also set my direction, so make sure your tail is going the correct direction. And lastly, we're going to use the stick to set our endpoints. So as you can see here, uh, if I give, if I crank it up, my rate's going to go higher. So as you can see, I can simply set tail endpoints right here on the radio. Very, very simple. Next, governor mode. Uh, we're going to have a segment right after this, really detailing governor mode. But for this, this is a Hobbywing ESC, I believe and they ship it with an internal governor mode that's already set up and it works and so we're using external governor on this machine right here. So that's it. Really that's about all you have to do to just get airborne which is pretty incredible. It's a nice setup wizard. It's really good. Okay so let's look at that detailed servo trim that we were talking about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into model setup, main rotor, and then we're gonna go to expert and then look at servo center trim. And this is really nice here because I can individually set the trim on the servos. So what I would do is go in here and set up my individual trims first to get my swash plate nice and level. Then what I would do is go back out into the main rotor, into the swash plate trim. And then I would use that to fine tune it if I absolutely have to once I'm up flying. Um, I actually don't mind using the collective trim. I think that the collective trim is a really good way to get your... Uh, collective endpoints the same, but to set your overall uh, swash plate height. So to me, I don't think that's cheating. Some people might be arguing with me on that, but I've never had a problem using that. So let's have a look at some other things that we can adjust here now that we're all set up here. So in the main rotor section, this is the feel of the helicopters. This is how everything's going to feel. So if, as you can see here, when I select different uh, settings here. Oh, let me go back in. As you can see here, when I move my um, bank switch, this is my bank switch or idle up, it's going to move to a different bank. 
okay? Now, we've said bank a few times, so what is a bank? A bank is real simple. It's a, it's a way in which the helicopter is going to fly on one switch. So if we had this switch all the way down, we could set up in this bank, we could set up a low head speed with uh, lots of exponential and uh, a really high style and um, we can lower the collective on there. There's different things we can do within a certain bank to make it feel a certain way. So we could have with the switch all the way down, we could have it really soft. Then as we flick into idle up one and idle up two, we could have it to where it's really starting to get faster and more aggressive. So for me, I prefer, and I believe Kyle's the same way, we try to keep everything as the same as possible in all of the banks, um, just to make it really easy on us when we're making changes on the fly. But you can really get crazy with banks if you want to. So here you can see we can adjust Expo, Style. Style's another thing. If, you've, if you're new to Mikado and the V Control and the V Bar, Style is real simple. They have a number in here which we can adjust from, I believe it's real low. Yeah, we go from 40 to 100, and 120. So Kyle and I run a style number of around 85 to 90. And what that means is a lower style will feel more of a direct input, similar to how a, how a RC helicopter used to fly when we had paddles. Um, it's kind of uh, like for smack, if you fly extreme smack, maybe a lower style is really good for you. The higher you crank your style up, the more synthetic and robotic it's going to feel. And just play with it, just go play with it. Um, I started lower in my style, maybe around 70, but recently I've started cranking it up to around 90. And it just seems a little bit more fluid for me, but that's a personal preference, so you can set style in here. Um, your rate is your flip rate, and you can simply go in and select how fast your helicopter is going to flip. Um, then we have the head gain, and we're gonna show you how to set your head gains in here. Um, this one is selects it at 50 at default, but I know we're going to end up in the mid-30s or so for a uh, main rotor gain. So, we also have on the tail rotor, we also have exponential, we have rate, we have tail gain. It's quite simple, actually. These are all numbers that you can just go in and select yourself and really just fine-tune to how you want it to fly. So, let's see. Governor. We're going to go in here and ESC output. That's simply how much throttle we want the uh, ESC to receive. So if we want a higher head speed in each of our banks, we simply go to ESC output. So this would give me uh, all the way in normal mode. I have uh, a flat line of 40%, flat line of 50%, flat line of 60%. Um, crank it up. Higher the number you crank it up, faster your helicopter is going to spin. So this covers our really basic settings here. This is going to allow us to go in and go fly here. So with these settings here, we can now take the aircraft out to the field and get it dialed in. We're going to show you that in a future segment. Um, so for now, let's get into governor mode because governor mode uh, requires its own segment because there's a lot involved. And it's kind of tricky because if you have different ESCs or different manufacturers, it can be really, it can be really tough. But we're going to try to show you a nice overview of electric and nitro governor mode. So let's have a look at that. Okay, we're going to start with a nitro governor, just a standard setup. So we have Bobby Synergy here, and just for simplicity, we only have the throttle servo plugged in. And it's plugged into the ESC port onto the V-Bar Neo. So first things first, we'll go into model setup, governor, governor mode. We have it set to V-Bar and Governor, which obviously means V-Bar Nitro Governor. Now we go down to Throttle Endpoints. Okay, and continue. So this is where we set the actual range that the throttle endpoints will be giving. So we'll start with the low. We, we, we popped off the throttle link, it's just so nothing can bind. Okay, so we put the motor in the off position, stick all the way down, and we'll start raising the endpoints slowly. So right about there is all the way down to low throttle. That's the motor shut off. Now we'll do full throttle where we raise the stick up. Go to the full speed high limit. Start raising it up. So right about there is full throttle. You can hear the servo is binding, so we backed off a point. And you'll see our endpoints are 110 and 120. Bobby and I really aren't a big stickler for the numbers being the same. If you want, you can change the length of the rod to make them, you know, perfectly the same. I don't really see a big need to make them the same, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to. 
Also, just a side note, you can change the direction of the throttle in case your servo is reversed. You can change it in this menu as well. Okay. Now we'll exit out of here. Go down to Governor Setup. So this is where we set some of the, the values that make the governor work properly. So the first one is Sensor Config. So this kind of defines how many magnets are in the fan if you're using a magnet sensor. So for the number of sensors you would put how many magnets you're using. Since we're using the spectrum backplate sensor we set the value to 1. That's just what we found has worked. Second part is gear ratio. This is where obviously you put the gear ratio of your model. I think the synergy is at 8.2 so we have it set to 8.2. Run up limit. So the V-bar nitro governor features a soft start and how this works is the run up limit defines how quickly it will spool up. So a higher value means it'll spool up faster, and a lower value means it'll spool up slower. I leave it stock because there's also a way to set it up so you just have throttle direct. So this is just like a standard setup where you, you control how fast it spools up. Then lastly is minimum throttle. I really don't change this number at all. I've never felt the need to, but what this serves as is it won't bring the governor below this number. And I've never been in a situation where I needed to adjust that, but it's there if you need to. Exit out of there. Nitro special. So this is what I was talking about, the old-fashioned way of spooling up. You set this as banked. So we're going to put it on bank 1. So when the switch is all the way down, which is bank 1, the throttle becomes linear. So you spool it up just as if you would with any other radio brand out there. Nice and smooth, and you control it. Then the other setting is throttle cut. So we'll just set it to any of the option switches that I mentioned before. And... Option switch two is here, so this is our throttle kill. That's it. Exit. And that's it for the actual setup itself. Now the last thing you have to do is come up to governor, and you set your head speed. So for bank one, we'll set something simple like 1760. For bank two, we'll set 1840. And then bank three, we'll set it at 1980. So the, there's two other settings in here. There's governor gain and idle setup. So governor gain is something we'll show you how to tune when we're out of the field. Uh, we'll do that later. And then idle setup is actually your throttle trim. So you're going to need to increase this, obviously, to start the engine. So once we start increasing it, you see the throttle move. That's just for when the stick is low. That's just It serves exactly as your throttle trim. That's all it is. And then what we'll show you next is how the throttle ramp up works. So if you're using just a soft spool up, which we mentioned here in the run-up limit, it's set to 3. You'll see if I click into my any other bank, it'll slowly start increasing the throttle. This is your soft start. And if you're out there flying and it's too slow, you can come into governor setup, run-up limit, increase the number. This is maxed out. You're not going to want to run this, but it's maxed out. And you'll see it'll start spooling up a lot faster. So that's about it for your governor setup, and uh, let's move on. Okay, so now we're gonna run through how to set up an electric governor using the V-Bar governor. So, first things first, I have a Hobbywing 160 amp V4 plugged in here. And coming out of the ESC, there's two leads. There's an ESC signal lead and an RPM lead. ESC plugs into the ESC port, RPM plugs into the RPM port. So before we even get started, I've already done this, but you need to put your ESC into fly barless governor mode. Uh, and the Hobbywing, it's called heli linear mode. If you're using a different uh, ESC, it might be labeled differently, but the manual will tell you how to set it. So first things first, we'll go down to Model Setup, Setup Tools, ESC Setup Wizard. They make it really easy and show you step-by-step -step for multiple ESCs, like you see YGE, Castle, Contronic. Hobbywing is not listed in here, so we're going to select Other ESC. So the first thing we're going to have to do is calibrate the endpoints. So we're going to load the setup. Okay, so close out of that. It just kind of reset all the parameters for us. We'll go down to governor under model setup and governor mode. We're going to use VBAR E governor, of course. Okay, exit. ESC endpoints. So, to be completely honest, this is a little bit of a frustrating task, but before I get into it, I'll explain what we need to do. 
we need to reboot the ESC without rebooting the V-Bar. Now the easiest way to do it is to use uh, a 2S pack or maybe a Scorpion backup guard to power the V-Bar. You have to do it at your own risk because it will be back feeding into the BEC. One way to do it, and this is how I do it, is you have to be very quick, but when you get into the endpoint mode, zero stick, unplug, go full throttle, and plug back in. Get two beeps, go down. Now our throttle is calibrated. Now, just to explain what I just did, is I rebooted the ESC before the V-Bar Neo even realized it was off. What you'll notice is when you unplug it, the V-Bar stays powered for a few seconds. That gives you some buffer time to go full throttle and then plug in the battery. It's tricky, it doesn't always work, but it, in most cases it works just fine, as you just saw. But uh, if you want to make it easier on yourself, you can use the 2S LiPo. Now, if I was too slow with going full throttle and plugging back in, the radio would say connection lost, we wouldn't be able to calibrate the endpoints, and that, or if the, the BEC booted up too slowly, it just wouldn't let you to calibrate. So it might take a few tries to get it right, but once you hear the beeps confirming the calibration, you know it was successful. So we'll plug back in to continue with the setup. Okay, now we'll go back into model setup. Go down to governor. Okay, we already did governor mode, we already did endpoints, and we'll do governor setup. This is basically exactly like the nitro setup, but for sensor config, that is half of the pole count of the motor. I'm using a Scorpion 4525-520. It's a 10 pole motor, so I put five for the sensor config. Next is gear ratio. Once again, it's just the gear ratio of your model. This is the Goblin Thunder Sport, and I have a 9.1 to one gear ratio. Run-up limit is the same. Uh, if you're going to use soft start, you can change the value to change how quickly it spools up. For those of you that don't know how an ESC and flybarless governor work, is the ESC initially spools it up and then hands it over to the V-Bar to complete the spool up. So for the smoothest transaction between ESC to V-Bar, I put my run-up limit to 2. It's basically streamless and you don't even notice when the ESC gives it over to the V-Bar. Uh, you can fine-tune that if your ESC goes slower or faster. Minimum throttle, same thing, it won't bring the governor down to the, this value. I've never once tuned it, uh, I would just leave it stock. Exit. And uh, that's it. Uh, what you'll see is some stuff gets aligned through it depending on your governor setup. Uh, that's just because we obviously don't need to do Nitro Special with this. Uh, same thing for if you come back up here to governor. The ESC output will have a line through it. That's because we're using the V-Bar governor. If we were using the Hobby Wing governor, we'd be able to adjust that. But since we're using V-Bar governor, we can adjust the head speed and set different RPMs for how fast we want it to spin. This is what I use on mine. I have two fast RPMs just so I can have two different banks to play with different styles and agilities and stuff like that. Okay, now we're going to check that throttle hold bailout is working. So we're going to go into governor. I changed my RPM down to 1000 just for the bench test. I'm going to go into expert, head speed expert, and auto rotation is set to 10%. So I'm going to click out, let it reach 1000 RPM, go one click into idle mode, and then back out to confirm it's working. set to fly. Okay, so we're here at the field. Welcome to the beautiful Torches uh, RC helicopter field here in kind of sunny Orlando, Florida. Um, been flying here for years now and this place is just awesome. So I'm sure you guys have seen this place in a lot of videos. So um, what we're going to go over now is the basics that we're going to do before the very first flight. So let's just assume this is a new model. Um, this is my Goblin uh, Thunder here, the Black Thunder. I don't know, Kyle, is it a Black Thunder? It's a Black Thunder. I don't know what kind of version it is. But um, anyway, I think I have maybe like 30 flights on this, so it's still relatively new. So what I'm going to go over is everything that I would do here 
when it's the first flight. So if it's a brand new model, this is everything I would do. So this is before we fly it, this is on the bench. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just simply gonna turn on my radio, make sure my switch is all the way up for the motor stop. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug in. And I'm just gonna look for flight worthy characteristics. That's really all I care about because we've already done our bench setup. We've already done everything else. And I just wanna make sure that everything that's, that every, every, every parameter is set, so at least we know we're gonna have a successful first flight and we're not just gonna tip over and crash. So we boot it up, it connected, it got the handshake, it shows me that I'm connected, and now we're all set. So caveat before we start is I have two applications uh, that I've got enabled in the radio right now. That's it. So I've got two applications that you guys might wanna use yourself that would, uh, increase, that would make your V-Control experience a little bit better. So the first one I have is called Talking Telemetry. Oh, and I guess we should say it's currently October of 2017. Uh, these might be loaded in as factory defaults later, but as of right now, I have two applications. First one, Talking Telemetry, where if you can hear, if I come over, and I flip my switch before I even fly, just flip the switch. Battery voltage, 50.1 volt used zero milliampere hours okay perfect so i've got this set up on the trainer switch which i love this is using my tribunus esc uh, telemetry that's coming back and it tells me my voltage and milliamps used so if i don't even have to check my battery i flick it i hear 50 volts i know i'm fully charged zero milliamps consumed while i haven't even flown yet the milliamps is more important after the flight so that's one the next one that i'm using is called main and tail overdrive and what that does is that allows the agility to go past 120 on the main rotor and on the tail rotor. So that'll make our flip rate faster than what Mikado allows out of a default radio setup, I guess we could say. So we have our lovely training cam here set up. We're gonna use this so that you can see our stick movements and everything that we're about to tune while we fly. So all I'm gonna do here, like I said, is I'm, now that I know it's, it's bound, it's set up correctly, I'm just gonna make sure that my swash plate is going the right way and my tail rotor is going the right way. That's the only thing I'm gonna do. So, first thing we'll do is we'll just check collective. So, up is up, down is down. Easy enough, so positive pitch, negative pitch. So I know that at least my helicopter's gonna take off. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my cycling. So if I get forward, the swash plate goes forward. If I get backwards, it goes back, left, and right. So the swash plate is indeed going the correct way. Now, more importantly, I'm gonna check that the swash plate is compensating the correct way. Because if I tell it to go forward and it gives more forward, then if I tilt the model forward and it compensates with more forward, that's bad, it's gonna crash. So when I tip the nose forward, it needs to come back, which it's in need doing. So it is compensating correctly here. I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna check aileron. And aileron is indeed compensating. Now, if this is not correct, then you need to go back and check your setup. Either you have this first stage where it asks you if the wire's up or wire's down, all your wires are pointed towards the back, this is faced up, that's how I have this set up. So if you're indeed backwards, then you either messed up here or you messed up when you told it what kind of swash plate you have, HR3 or H3. So if that's ever backwards, that's where you go and correct those in that main setup menu. Next, we're gonna check the tail. So simply, I'm just gonna check my tail and make sure it's going the correct way. Let me go and uh, show you guys a little tip that if you guys are longtime Smack Talk watcher, viewers, then you already know this tip. But for any model where the tail blades are spinning backwards, to check the uh, tail direction, all I do is I point the top tail blade forward, left goes left, right goes right. It's just as easy as that. So the tip goes to the left, the tip goes to the right. So I know my tail rotor is the correct way. Then lastly, I'm gonna check the compensation direction. So to check that, we know that if I give left and it goes left, that's, so that means that my uh, sliders come in this way, for example, so it's given left. So that means when I move the nose right, it should give left, so it should go that way. So if I move the nose right, it's going that way. If I move the nose to the left, then it's compensating with right rudder. So you can see here, my directions are all set up. So once again, this pre-flight check is just to make sure that I've got everything set so I know that at least when I take off, it's not gonna flip over and crash. So now that we're all set here, I'm gonna put the canopy on, I'm gonna turn the training cam on, and we're gonna go over what I do for the first flight initial testing. 
We're gonna set our collective range. We're gonna set our style, our agility, our expo, set the uh, flip rates on main and tail rotor, and then Kyle's gonna go over some expert tuning settings, which I think you guys are really gonna appreciate. I know I've learned a lot from him just telling me in general. So uh, yeah, let's go fly this thing and get this thing dialed in. All right, we're plugged in, canopy's on, time for the first flight. So what we're gonna go over first is we're just gonna get into a hover, make sure everything's working, just check our directions. And just for the sake of where to start, there's no real right or wrong way to uh, start anywhere, but just for showing you this video, let's start with uh, how much umph we're giving it. So let's start with head speed and collective. Let's give that a shot first. So in order to spool up, it's super easy. I just click straight out right here and it's gonna begin spooling up. See a nice spool up right there. So I believe I have a low head speed, like a 1600 head speed or something. We can see on my radio actually right here, my head speed. You can see I'm at 17, 1750, 1760. So I'm just gonna take off here. And just a nice, easy, easy hover. So checking my directions, everything's correct. If something wasn't right, immediately I'd hit hold land it and try to diagnose what's going on. So let's just make sure my three head speeds are working. So I've got in my three banks, I have set up normal. I just clicked into idle up one. So I have a higher head speed here. I believe I'm at 1960. And I clicked into two and here I'm at 2200. So those head speeds seem pretty good to me. Um, now let's just check our collective punch out. So if our cameraman can keep up, I'm just going to punch out straight up. So here we go. One, two, three. No. <sighs> Alright, we couldn't keep up there. Alright, so we'll try inverting. So I'll punch up. Three, two, one. Okay. So another way that we can test our collective direction, if you're, if you're comfortable with testing a uh, rainbow, we can do a rainbow back and forth. This is a good way to check collective as well. And I'm doing this because I can keep it relatively low. So back and forth. And my collective is climbing the same way. Now personally, I run about 12 or 13 degrees on collective, and that's just really a personal preference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and land. So, once again, so checking head speed and checking collective. The best way to do it is just to punch straight up, right side up, flip it upside down, punch it that way. If you're not comfortable with flipping inverted, uh, don't worry if your collective is balanced, right? I mean, just make sure that it's comfortable uh, when you hit positive collective, because you're not gonna go inverted as much as you're still learning. Um, with collective, you don't want too much so that when you hit it, you don't want your tail to blow out. That's really bad. My governor's keeping up here fine, so 12, 13 degrees, wherever I am, it's really good. So let's take a look at our head speed adjustment here in case I did want to go and adjust that. So what I do is I simply go to the governor page, and as you can see here, I have three head speeds. 1760, 1960, and 2200. So it's adjusting my three banks here. I can simply hit it. And right here, I could simply edit my head speed just like that on the fly. I could go to 2180, 2200. So that's where I'd edit my head speed. And those head speeds, I really like them where they are right now. So I'm just going to leave them. Now, um, if I wanted to adjust my pitch, there's two ways to do it. We could do collective curve, which I'm not too, much, too big of a fan of collective curve. But what I prefer doing is going into model setup. Once I'm into model setup, I go to collective endpoint. And right here, I can simply adjust my collective both ways. So as you can see here, I have negative 93, and here I have positive 86. Now, the reason that those are different is simply because my collective trim may not be quite perfect. But I'm not too much of a stickler for everything having to be the same numbers. So me having these two numbers a little different is just fine with me. So that's how we'd go in and fine tune our collective. Because this one's already tuned, I know I like about 12 and a half degrees collective, we're good. Governor sounded happy, so let's just leave it right there. So we checked that one off the list. So we did collective and we did head speed. Now let's move into the main uh, list here. Let's have a look. So on our main list, 
the V-Control is super nice because it's got everything all in one list. So in main rotor, we have Expo, Style, Rate, and Game. So let's take a look at those right now. So first, let's look at Expo. So what is Expo? Expo is simply the amount of, um, it's not dead band, but the amount of softness or speed that gets put in right in the middle of the stick. So if we crank Expo up a lot to 50 or 100, it's gonna feel real soft around the middle. If we have zero Expo, as soon as I move the stick in any direction, it's gonna start giving an input. So on this one, I've got 20 across all of my banks, which is just fine with me. Um, Expo's just a personal feel. I can't really fly it and show you much of anything with Expo. It's just how you feel around center. If you want it to slow down a little bit around center, increase your Expo. Kyle and I run around 10 to 20, depending on the model, so I think that 20 is just about fine there. So style, style's the next number. Um, style is, I believe we talked about it already, but style, pretty much, if we crank it real low, it's gonna feel like an old flybard helicopter. It's gonna feel real aggressive, um, not as precise, let's just say. Where if we crank up our style, it's gonna add a more robotic or a synthetic or a real precise sort of a feeling. Um, I've been running my style anywhere between 85 and 90, and if I were to fly it for you right now, you can't really tell the difference if I were to fly a low style or a high style. So that one, once again, is a personal preference. Um, so the next thing we can look at is rate. So let's go ahead and, and look at rate here. So we'll look at rate and we'll look at gain. So let's just do head rate here for a sec, for example. So I'm gonna spool up and all the rate is is simply just a flip rate. So when I tell it to put, when I push it forward into a full front flip or push it into an aileron roll or something, the rate is simply just how fast it's gonna rotate around the head. So I'll put in my idle up two and I'm just gonna enter into a front flip here. Okay, back flip. So that's my rate at 120. So to me, that's like that feels like a pretty good cyclic rate there. I would normally just maybe do a little bit more flying and just get an idea of exactly how it's feeling. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna adjust here our flip rates and our head gain. And just for the sake of having some banks to work with, I put my head speed as 2200 in all my banks. So you can see here, my head speed is the same. It's just so that each in each bank that we adjust here, our head speed's the same. So let's do this. Let's go ahead in our main rotor and I'm gonna take my uh, idle up one, for example. I'm gonna take my rate and I'm gonna turn that down to uh, 100. Now on my second one, I'll have my rate at 120. So we'll, we'll just stay right here in this bank. I'm in idle up one bank and just click right out. So you can see in here we're at 100 on my flip rate. I love one with a 100 flip rate. of your model to be. Uh, 120 is where I seem to be happiest. I believe Kyle runs even a little faster. Hold on for that for next second. All right, cool. So now that we have our rate set, once again, it's personal preference. There's no right or wrong. The next thing we're gonna do in here is go to a head gain. Now, just to be able to show you easily what a low head gain looks like and what a high head gain looks like, let, let me take, since I have the same banks and everything, I'm just gonna take my bank one and lower it to 35, and I'll take uh, bank two, and I will raise it to, um, let's see, raise it to 75, 80 or something. And then my bank three is 50, which is where my head gain en ended up on this aircraft. So first bank's gonna be gain too low, second bank's gonna be gain too high, third bank's gonna be just right. So let's go in lastly and just adjust our rate to the same flip rate so that we're at 120. All right, so everything's the same. Everything's the same, except for the head gain. So let's look at how we're gonna tune gain. So, with a low head gain, what we're gonna see, if our camera can keep up here, 
what we're gonna see is if around the center it's just gonna seem a little soft um, it's not gonna be quite as direct responsive to my stick inputs here just a low head gain it's fine it feels okay but what I'll really see in some fast forward flight is I'm gonna see that it's gonna lift up on me so maybe I'll just see the away from us here so if I go to fast flight it's kind of lifting up on me it's not super precise it just feels a little bit dead This doesn't really feel all that responsive. Um, that's the best way to see it. And I always think that tuning gain is easier to always get too high and to tune down than it is to be too low and to tune up, if that makes any sense. So now let's go into bank two, which is my high gain at 85. So this is my high gain at 85. And what you'll see here is I'm gonna do little jabs. Okay, do little jabs. And you'll see when I let off, see how it's doing a little bounce? little bobble that's bad we don't want that bobble okay the other thing that we're gonna see in forward flight is it's gonna go like this blah, 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 blah. it's gonna do that in a in a fast forward flight motion so if I hit the forward flight here I can hear it it's bobbling it's, it's, it's uh it's it's doing that oscillation it's doing that sort of blah, 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 blah sort of thing so I can just tell, even from a hover right here, that my gain is just too high. So if I put it in my bank three, which is where my gain is at 50, you can see here I get a nice jab, and it's just staying. We just do these little elevator jabs. We can do aileron jabs too. And it's just staying. Wherever I hit it, it's going. And if I just hit my pitch, it's beautiful. It's tracking nice and straight. It's not ballooning up. This feels really good. So that right there helped me set my, just even right there, just doing these little, little movements. We don't have to do all that much to get our helicopter perfectly dialed in. So the last thing I think I'll leave you with is paddle sim. So paddle sim is, if you guys are new to helis within the last two years, you don't know what a paddle is. But we used to have a separate fly bar with little paddles uh, perpendicular to our main rotors, which would help the responsive, the overall responsiveness of the model aircraft. So what paddles used to do is they used to be real quick responding and if we were to do smacks type stuff, they'd really dig into the air and give us this, uh, this interesting feeling that's kind of hard to describe in comparison to fly barless. So if you want something that's a little snappier, a little bit more responsive, especially in smack type stuff with TikToks, you do two things. Number one, you can lower your style. So I'm at 85, I'm kind of at middle of the road, a little high if anything. Or, you could, so you could drop style to like 45, 50. I think Bert runs his down there because he's more of a smack down sort of thumb, stick bang sort of pilot. I guess I am too. Or you can go into paddle sim. So with paddle sim, we're gonna go to main rotor. We're gonna go to expert. And we go down here. And we go till we see swash expert. And you're gonna see right here, paddle sim. So as you see, I have in all my banks, I have, uh, okay, you can see here, I have five of paddle sim in my uh, main flight mode that I fly and idle up to. So for me, one day we're out here testing and we just increased it just a little bit and it felt okay to me, so I liked it. So it just kind of gives that sort of responsiveness that you might be looking for in aileron TikToks and stuff. So I know that's probably a lot, um, it's a lot to go over here. There, once again, there's a million different menus we can go through, but these are just the main menus that Kyle and I use to get this thing flying where we want. So now that I'm all set here on the main rotor, the last thing we're just gonna do is tail rotor. It's pretty simple. So we're just gonna go back here to the main flight mode, and let's just go look in our tail rotor real quick. And it's super simple. We have three options. We have expo, we have rate, and we have tail gain. So I'm running 15% Expo, I believe 40 is stock. I don't like much Expo on my tail, so I crank that down to 15 across all banks. And then on my tail rate, I traditionally run a pretty fast tail. So I'm at 140, um, which is overdriven. I believe 120 is the max that I can normally do. But with this application, I'm now running 140, which I think just seems to help. I just like a faster pirouette. And that's, I, I can show you that, but it's not too, it's not too for, far away from the rate. If I were to lower it and go from 140 to one, 110 or 120, it's just a slower pirouette rate. 
that's all up to you. Next is tail gain. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you a real basic way to set tail gain. So in here you can see I'm at around 60 uh, for my idle up to tail gain. So let's have a look at that. So tail gain, there's two ways to check it. And we can do both 20 feet off the ground if we want. So the easiest way, if you're, if, if uh, you know, you're a sport pilot or a 3D pilot or whatever it may be, tail gain, I find the best thing is a nice tight turn. So if we go here and we give a tight turn like this, just a tight turn. Tight turn. So just this tight turn is enough to see if your tail gain's too high, it's gonna start wagging. And once again, with tail gain, we just want it to not wag in a hover or in forward flight. So as you can see here, I've got my rate. That's my rate at 140. I like that, pretty happy with that. We just checked our tail gain one way. The other way to check tail gain is to simply put it in a funnel and start a funnel. And if my tail were to wag, then I know my tail is, my tail gain is too low. Now, if you heard, my head speed just dropped. That's actually the way I have my timer set in my tribunal. So if you just heard my head speed drop, it's because we're low on battery here. And so really between forward flight and a funnel, that's really all you need to check the tail gain. So this is all basic settings. Once again, I know it's kind of a lot probably a long segment here, but this is exactly what I would do for the first or second flight, just to get all my settings dialed in. So now that we have our rough settings dialed in, let's hand it over to Kyle, and he's gonna show you some more advanced stuff to really tune in your, your model. All right, so Bobby just got us set up on the basic settings, and I'm gonna go over some more advanced stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna cover is head speed, collective and cyclic add. Now this is a feature where if you're running a lower RPM, the V-Bar governor will automatically feed in more RPM to compensate for the, like a, a collective pitch pump. So the first flight is gonna be set with, uh, with it really low and then with it really high. So let's go check it out. So I have my RPM set at about 1600 right now. This is perfect to, to really hear the sound difference. So all it is, just put it in the hover and climb out. So you'll hear that my RPM, I'll do it again, you'll hear that it, it increased significantly. So my collective ad is set too high. Now for a contrast, I'll click into my next bank, which has collective bank, collective ad, sorry, set to 10. You'll hear almost no RPM change. Now if I give cyclic, I'll go back to the main one. That collective is set well. I think it's at 10 right now, which is default. So you hear no RPM change, just about no RPM change when I give cyclic input. So we'll land and change that back. To adjust that, we'll just go into governor here. Let's go into expert, governor expert. And right here on the top left, we have collective add, 45. That's way too high. So we'll take it down to about 15. It defaults at 30, which is too high in my opinion, so we run it down to about 15. And then cyclic add felt great. So now we can go back out and prove that it's working. Alright, 1600. So when I give collective, you hear a very brief RPM increase. And that's set just about perfectly so that when I give collective and the motor bogs, the RPM compensates for that. All right. So now the next advanced tuning parameter we're gonna go over is called collective balance. Let's hand it over to Kyle for that one. Thanks, Kyle. So now we're gonna go over collective balance. Uh, part of the version six of the VBAR software that Mikado included was something called anti-ballooning. Now that's kind of based around speed flying and big flying. What they did is they in introduced an algorithm where they're gonna reduce your collective pitch if it's starting to balloon up. So you have a better chance of not pitching up in a speed flight. But 
in 3D flying, it'll actually it'll reduce the collective as well. So it, it can kind of create a funny feeling when you're really digging into the sticks. So there's a feature called collective balance. All the way down is this first bank, and then all the way up is the next bank, and I'll show you the difference. So we're at full negative pitch. I'll get a full back elevator. That's collective balance all the way on, all the way off. You see it reduces my collective heavily. All the way off, all the way on. So that's for someone if you use a lot of collective and a lot of cyclic and you don't want it to reduce either, crank collective balance all the way up. Now let's get back to flying. Thanks Kyle. So the next thing we're going to go over is the logging system within the V-Bar. A lot of people find where they try to reach a certain RPM, let's say 2400, and they go to fly and it's just constantly bogging. They're trying to change their governor gain, a bunch of settings, and no matter what they just can't figure it out. Normally the issue is gearing, but before you even start changing different pinions, you can go and check the log to find out. So I have a bank set up with 2400, which is way too high for this gear ratio, and we're going to pull up the log and see what it says. So my RPM is supposed to be set at 2400. Now it might reach it in a hover, but as soon as I start flying around, it'll probably bog. So right there, and anything regarding full collective or really beating on it, you can hear the RPM sag down real low. So what we'll do is we'll go into Close out a collective ad, we don't need that. Close out all of these menus, we're we'll going to model steps. And going to current log. Now if we scroll down towards the end, we will see. Where is it? Governor full throttle. Governor full throttle is at it. We just did not have enough overhead to reach 2400. So maybe it got there in a hover. As soon as I gave it collective, it immediately dropped down. Governor full throttle just means the governor literally cannot put out any more RPM. So in this case, I would get, uh, for a goblin, it's a motor pulley. I'd, this is a 22, so I'd go to a 23. Give it more room, and then that way we'd be able to reach 24 RPM. Another way we could solve it is by just reducing the RPM. And thanks to the V control, we can easily find out this acceptable governor RPM range for this gear ratio. All right, so now we're going to cover some more expert stuff. So first up, we're going to check if our pirouette rate is consistent. And we're going to do that with a pirouetting funnel. So let's get into it. So sometimes if you're doing something in anything pirouetting, you can get something called tail whipping, which means the rate, the pirouette rate is changing throughout the, throughout the maneuver. So we will have it set to... So this is kind of more the advanced pilots. Uh, the only way I've really found to do this is something with like a pirouetting funnel, maybe a pirouetting loop as well. So we'll put it into a pirouetting funnel. You see it's pretty consistent. As it comes around, I'm watching the tail rotor for changes in speed. And it looks really consistent to me. So what we'll do is I have a bank set up where it's not going to be, and this is eye gain. If your eye gain is too low, you can get some pirouette whipping. So I have my eye gain down to 40 right now. So I'll start the maneuver again. You can see it, it it's whipping. It'll, it'll be faster than slower. Faster than slower. So I fly a stock setting of 60. I've never had to tune it, but if you find yourself having to tune it, you're gonna wanna go up and eye gain. So increase your eye gain. If increasing the eye gain doesn't help, another option is to go larger on the tail blades. But if you go larger tail blades, you have other repercussions with that. Louder noise, possibly stall the tail rotor, or things of that nature. To adjust the eye gain, simply go to tail rotor, tail rotor expert, and then tail rotor expert again. And it's right there, eye gain. That's the default value of 60%. So next we're going to cover optimizer. There's a main rotor optimizer and a tail rotor optimizer. The optimizer for the main rotor is your flip rate tied into your stop gain. The easiest way to set it is you just go into your main rotor, expert, squash expert, and optimizer. It's turned on right now. So how you set it is you go out, you start flying, you do five, six back flips in a row and then stop. And then do forward flips, stop. And then just kind of give some cyclic jabs. Now what that does is it's setting the, the best flip rate 
and the stop gain. So it might go up a couple points, might go down a couple points. Basically, it's just tuning all the bobbles out. For the tail rotor, it's similar, but it also ties into your your left pirouette rate as well as your right pirouette rate. So we'll close out of main rotor, tail rotor, expert, and optimize. You see side A and B, and it's on. So what this is doing is it's tuning the left pirouette rate and the right pirouette rate to be the same exact speed as well as the stops. So if you come around you stop and it kicks back, keep going, keep pirouetting. Come around and stop again and eventually it'll stop and it won't kick back. Won't be any jitters, it'll just come around, perfect stop, and the left pirouette and the right pirouette will be exactly the same. So after you do both your flights, be sure to turn them back off or otherwise your flip rate and your tail rate will constantly change as you fly. Just get them set, turn them off, and you're good to go. Okay, you've made it this far. This is the very end of all of our first initial tips about the V-Control, but we're saving the best for last. So if, if you've watched this whole thing and you've been like, oh, I know everything. I know everything that they've been saying. Well, I believe we've got one for you. And I must thank Mr. Stacy and Mr. Dahl, Mr. Kyle Stacy and Mr. Kyle Dahl for this next tip. Because these guys taught me this a little while ago and it has really made a huge difference in my model setup. So, have you ever set up a new V-Bar? You've done your swash plate leveling, you've put the swash leveling tool on it, and everything's perfect, you've set your pitch, everything's wonderful. Go outside, you fly, you pirouette it, and it's like this the whole time. The disc wobbles, and you're like, what the heck? So, this is gonna fix that. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the trim menu in order to achieve a perfectly level swash plate. So, let's give it a shot. So here, I've got my Black Thunder gauntlet again. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to put it into a hover and then pirouette. And with any luck, you're going to see my disc is not flat. So let's take a look. Now by flat, what I'm saying is that when the model hovers, assuming I have a perfect CG, then what should happen is the, the disc should, should stay relatively flat. And if you can see here, my disc is just wobbling a little bit. It's just wobbling away from me. And it's just kind of wanting to wander all over the place. If you look at my right hand, I'm getting some direction. So, our goal is to use the trim menu in order to fix this. So, here's what we're going to do. So you saw a non-flat pirouette, so that's not what we want to get a nice flat pirouette. So here's what we're gonna do. As I'm pirouetting, I'm gonna give a little, little, little input in order to try to fix my pirouette, in order to fix for the compensation. Now, caveat, you kinda wanna do this on a calm day, because if you've got 20 mile an hour winds blowing, you're gonna need to give a lot of corrections into the pirouette anyway to just stay in one spot. So if you do it on a nice calm day, like today's not bad, five, 10, five, 10 miles an hour. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give a small direction one way or the other and then I will know exactly which way my swash plate has to go. So, let's take a look here. Achieving a flat pirouette. So, as I pirouette, what I'm gonna do is let me try to add a little bit of right. All right, that's not any better. So with the right, it, it really didn't get all that much better. So let's try some left side. It's not really any better either. And sometimes you really need to see it in person. It might not come across so well on camera. But what we're looking for is just a nice, flat here. Like all right, let me try some back towards us. That's not it. Let's try some forward. A little bit of forward. Oh, look at that. So when I just added a little bit, if you look at my stick, I'm hardly giving anything. Just a little bit of forward, like that, oh, and that's a nice flat pirouette. Now if it's crooked, it'll look like this. This is me really exaggerating it. But you can see here, I'm pulling back, right? So that's what we don't want it to look like. We want it to look like a nice flat pirouette. So what we saw is that if I push forward just a little bit, it fixed my pirouette. So let's go into the radio and let's fix this, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into um, trends. We're gonna go in here to model setup. Make sure you land the machine first or else it'll shut off in the air, possibly. Go to model setup. Then we're gonna go to main rotor. 
and then we're gonna go to swash plate trim. So what I saw is that if I hold a little bit of forward, my pirouette's gonna be nice and flat. So I'm gonna go to elevator, let me give it three clicks. One, two, three. Forward, exit. Let's try this again. Battery voltage, oh, 14, talking to launch. zero, full. So they only use a few, few minutes. So it just so happens that this is where my setting was before. Change it for you guys. And I feel wet. And look at the dip. We have a nice flat feel wet. I'm compensating a little bit to keep into the wind, like so I don't go anywhere. But if you look at the disc, the pure wet is staying nice and flat. So even if I go upside down and you do the inverted pure wets like we, you know, like everybody does, you see the disc is staying nice and flat. So what that's going to help with is some things like a pure wetting flip. So if we're doing a pure wetting flip, it's so much easier when the disc is actually flat. So, that about concludes our setup, our tips, our expert tips. Uh, that's pretty much everything we got for now for the V-Bar control. So I hope you found that useful. So thank you for watching. Nice, that was cool, wasn't it? Episode 31. Yep. That was awesome. Yeah, there was a lot of information in that one. Man, that one was a technical one. Yeah. Compared to some previous episodes, uh, that was probably one of the more technical ones, but hopefully it was useful for you guys. Hopefully you learned something. Yeah, that's a big pill to swallow, but I think we tried to make it pretty easy to understand. I think so. I think so. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to post some setup files that we have right on the website, smacktalkrc.com, under the episode 31. Uh, we'll post some links to it right there for some setup files for some of our different helis. Maybe that'll help you. To go along with that, mm -hmm. it's a cautionary thing. You have to check your servo direction. Yes. Because your servos might go a different way, and your tail servo frequency. We fly BK, so they're 760. But if you fly something else, it might be 1520, so just be very careful. And it might go kaboom. You never know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it probably wouldn't go kaboom. But uh, yeah, just, just we're going to add like a bunch of yeah. uh, warnings, and we're not responsible yeah. for you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But we're trying to help. Mm -hmm. So we'll post our setup files, and you can check them out. Yeah. Um, I think there's some add ons, right? Yeah, some stuff we didn't show, but Mikado makes some sensors. They have a current sensor that you can ah, solder right. in, they have a GPS sensor. GPS sensor is cool. Like if you crash your model, you can pull up a QR code and Google Maps will take you to it. Oh, that's cool. It's awesome. So there's some battery stuff, some GPS stuff, all sorts of different accessories, transmitter case, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then another thing you can get is a ninja wrap. A ninja wrap. A ninja wrap. Shameless plug. Yep. Our buddies Joe and Travis Reyes, they make wraps. It's a sticker that goes over. You can do like extravagant like your own brand or you can do something like me, just like a carbon V. It looks cool. Make sure it's a little unique and different. So check them out. I like it. I like it. That's good. Yep. Now. Another surprise for you guys. Well, I guess this is a good surprise. So, after we went through this episode, which we haven't done it, we're not done editing as the current moment that we're filming this, but if I'm guessing we're an hour to hour and a half for this episode, we have more content for a second V-Bar Control episode, V-Control episode. There's more. There's always more. There's a lot more. So, coming up pretty soon after this, we're hoping we're going to have V-Control Part 2 because there's a lot to talk about with this radio. And we think there's a lot of guys out there flying the V-Control, so we want to help out. Yeah. So look for V-Control Part 2 coming out pretty soon after the release of this episode. Yeah, we'll put a time on it, but soon. Hopefully really soon, yeah. hopefully really soon. So thank you guys again for watching. Thank uh, you, thank hopefully, you. Cool. Yeah, hopefully you learned a lot. And um, let, give us feedback. Go to Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram. I'll just find us wherever you can. Mm -hmm. um, he's on Facebook at facebook.com slash... KyleStacyRC. Ah, okay. And I'm facebook.com slash Bobby Watts Heli. Mm -hmm. And this is facebook.com slash smacktalkrc, I believe. Smacktalkrc.com. Leave, uh, leave comments, reviews, whatever you want. Oh, yeah, that's right. Where you're watching this video right now, there is a comment section. So you can go in and leave a comment on this episode. That would really help us. See what you like, see what you didn't like. Um, and then that way we can tailor some future episodes to what the people are saying. Yeah, exactly. Some, some suggestions and whatever you guys got just send it our way yeah. yeah even if you hate us if you totally hate us actually no just go easy because we're sensitive people <laughs> yeah. but um you know just just let us know yep like awesome it. it's funny stuff. thank you guys we'll see you next time appreciate it see you soon Oh, 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 oh,
Hey, did you do some Z-bar fitting to this thing? Yeah, I watched the Is it pure running flat? I watched Smack Talk and I was pure running pretty flat. Nice! Well, Mitch, we need to see that in your face. Bring it here. We need to see it closer. The people need to see it closer. It farts good. Nice. Been making fun of my EC5s. Unbelievable. I know. I usually don't do that. I don't know why I did. This is despicable. Hey, EC5. Okay. All right. Roll. Go for it. So now we're gonna cover optimizers real quick. Again? Well, you're just a very sweaty human being. I get it from Gator. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right in the only ear hole. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's gonna wipe all the parameters here in the V bar Neo. So that's what it's doing as it's loading the setup here. Okay, we're good. Okay, so now it's loaded up a brand new setup file. Now going over expert menus part two. Three, two, one. All right, hold on. I just pooped. Okay, go for it. All right, basically what the optimizer does is it's your, your flip rate or tail rate. Really? Your phone and the airplane. Guitar center. Everyone deserves a second chance. Not true. Airplane mode, please, sir. We're filming here. Thank you. Calm down. Um, airplane mode. Airplane mode. All right, go for it again. Airplane mode. All right, go for it. Hold on. I said that wrong. Anyway. Talk nice good. and loud. Nice and loud for the good people at home. No. Are we good? Good. So next we're going to cop... Mm -hmm. See, I had a good take going, and then you yeah, made me stop. So next we're going to cover... Kind of cool. That was nice. good. That was nice and happy. Very positive. You were happy. Were you feeling okay there? You were smiling? The cold brew kicked in. <laughs> My name is Bobby. I crashed my fireball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened, Bobby? <sighs> Fall down, go boom. Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen Iron Man, you know when he's got the whole space suit or the his suit and it's freaking coming on him one part at a time, and then he's Iron Man. It's like that, but in reverse. What song is that? Nope. <laughs> You're a good singer. Thanks. <laughs>